Welcome back to the program. Joining me now, Dr. Jay Barth. He is the director of the William J. Clinton Presidential Library and Museum. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you, Roby. We're here to talk about uh, not our polling numbers that we normally do uh, through Talk Business and Politics and Hendricks College, but we are here to talk about some interesting statistics. Mm -hmm. There was a big civic engagement conference that took place this past week um, at the Clinton School, at the Clinton Library. Give everybody a little bit of an overview of what was presented. Yeah, and first I want to emphasize I had really little to do with the with the creation of this report, although it's a really impressive report. You on are a political science I professor, am. so I, I think you're qualified to dive into uh, it. Indeed, um, but it is a really great overview of the civic health of Arkansas. And uh, this is, uh, you know, Arkansas is one of uh, 36 states now where a team of folks have come together to put together great data that is available via the census mm -hmm. to really get some understanding of the civic health of the state. And uh, that means a lot of different things. It shows itself in a lot of different forms, whether it's voting, whether it's volunteering in uh, community organizations, whether it's being neighborly. Uh, and this report really gives a sense of the ways in which Arkansans are or are not too often, uh, it, which is the case, uh, showing civic health. And we've got a lot of work to do uh, to make the state uh, a civically healthy uh, place. Let's talk about some of the groups that were involved in this. Mm -hmm. um, and just to let everybody know, we wanted to do this on a timely basis. And so that's why you were here um, uh, as a cleanup batter on this <laughs> one, because we couldn't get uh, Dr. Victoria Francesco Soto mm -hmm. from the Clinton School to be here. And Janet Harris with the Rockefeller Institute was also mm -hmm. tied up. But I, I felt it was important to get this out. And this we had week. a great panel on Monday, and I did. I, I did you moderated I, I that moderated panel. There. You were right. So. And uh, it, it was a really great uh, team of folks who really brought some of the numbers here to, to life and how it plays out in daily uh, politics in the communities. Let, let's talk about some of the, the statistics that were revealed mm -hmm. here. The report found that Arkansas ranked 51st in voter participation. There's only 50 states, mm -hmm. Jay, and we're 51st. <laughs> That's never a good sign. That so is never a good sign. Of uh, course, what, District of Columbia also thrown What out. does that mean that we're low in voter participation? And I don't know if you recall the numbers or not. I, it's 62% uh, of eligible Arkansans are registered. Only 54% voted. Right. And that is way below the national averages. Exceptionally low. And Arkansas has always had a gap in terms of voter participation, but it had really closed pretty dramatically in the um, in the 80s and 90s, we had started to look so much more like the rest of the country. Th that gap has really grown again um, and I think expanded. I do think that one part of it is just how one party uh, the state now is, is that state many elections are not competitive and that's a reason for folks to turn out to vote. But you know, there are states where there aren't competitive elections where folks still turn out to vote because they see it as part of their civic duty. And we simply are not doing a good job uh, and I would argue at a very early age of helping folks understand the importance of having a voice in the democratic process. Uh, women were more likely to vote than men. It was about 56 percent to 51 percent. This is in the last presidential election. That is different from 2016 uh, where it was basically 57 percent women, 50, almost 60 percent men. Yeah. So why that swing? I don't know. I think those, you know, elections have every election has a little bit of a different dynamic and and I, I think that uh, you know we are seeing some conversations that are more directed at female voters oftentimes and I think that may be some of the things that are going on there. There was a female candidate on the ballot there in 2016 a, for president. They yeah. had an Arkansas connection yeah. too. Yeah, so. yeah. So, you know, some of the numbers are a little bit of a mystery. I think I would look at the at the bigger patterns and the bigger patterns are very clear in terms of Arkansas's um, uh, limited turnout. Now there was a little bit of good news on the turnout front, the voter participation front, and that was the fact that at least in the last uh, election cycle, young voters did turn out at a pretty uh, good clip compared to, uh, to what, we what yeah. we see historically, which is really, really low. What do we see historically with younger voters? I mean, we, we often see, you know, just minuscule turnout compared to older voters and, and you know, the, that uh, we, we know in, in our polling just how important older voters are in driving elections. Here we do see much more of a voice for for young voters. We did see some of that nationally, but it's it's exceptional to see it in Arkansas. And that was really good news. And if that pattern continues, that may begin to uh, close some of the gap 
um, you know, over time. When you look at some of the numbers that you're looking at statistically, and I still have a few more I want to drill down into, um, is some of it just gener generational? There's like a smaller population of younger voters because there aren't as many people entering, I mean, just census-wise, there aren't as many people in that universe as there are, say, baby boomers, as there are maybe Gen X. Mm -hmm. I, is that part of what can drive that lower turnout? Uh, partly, but uh, you know, I would really put the emphasis on how Arkansas compares to the rest of the nation because those, that's a reality in all states. And where what the problem is that Arkansas is underperforming compared to other places in the country. And I think that's the real story here, is, at least on the voting front, is that Arkansas is just a place where folks don't feel that their voice really matters, that that time and energy that is needed to invest in learning about candidates and then showing up to vote, um, that just isn't there. And you know, I think there are some challenges in, in rural parts of the state in terms of getting uh, to polling, play, polling sites. Um, and um, you know, even in, in urban areas, um, occasionally it can be a little challenging with some transportation issues and other things that face certain communities in particular. Well, and we've passed some laws that have been made exactly. it more stringent in terms of early voting and voting in general, and that too, I think, is viewed by many people as being something that can depress voter turnout because you have to go through more hurdles. There's not same-day registration, there's, you know, things like that. And these were some of the mm -hmm. recommendations yep. that came out of what I think was a pretty bipartisan mm -hmm. group of people on this. What were some yeah. of the recommendations that came out? Yeah, and, and that, w that is a, something we see that really enhances turnout is being able to show up that day, register to vote, uh, and voting that day. Um, even if it's a provisional ballot, just being able to, you know, not have these big gaps between registration deadlines and election day, because that's, you know, that's often uh, a big chunk of time where th we know the energy of campaigns really happens in the last handful of weeks and folks begin thinking about it and then it's too late for them to participate uh, in the process. The argument though on the other side being that you should care enough, you know, I care enough to go register and vote and keep up with all these candidates, you should do that same amount of work to put into your civic participation too. I think that's where some people feel like why do we have to make it easier? I've been I've been able to do it every election cycle. Why can't a younger person or somebody that's not been part of the process do that? But if you've never been part of the process before, you don't know all of the rules. You may actually have some little passion. You just don't know all of the dynamics of, that go into getting prepared to, to vote. And sadly, I think we're, we're, we're not doing enough in terms of civic education in schools and out of schools to really prepare folks. You know, civics is often offered in Arkansas's public schools in the ninth grade. That's a long time before folks actually become eligible to be mm -hmm. voters. We need to close that gap. I would argue we really need to offer civics in 11th grade where it's really closer to the to the moment where folks can be participants in the process. The Rockefeller Institute is also going to launch an initiative yeah. out of this. What are they going to be doing? Yeah, and, uh, and it's super exciting. I, and I do think that's some of the real excitement out of this is that a number of groups have said, we're going to step up and really try to make a difference, change these numbers over over the years. And the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute really taking the lead there. They're really going to you know invest in uh, a, a process that really tries to cover the entire state and try to make a difference in terms of these all of these numbers uh, across the entire entire state um, and you know they we know their history of great convenings uh, and they're really going to begin to try to bring some of those tools out focused on uh, civic health. I, I tend to think that Governor Rockefeller would appreciate that a lot. Indeed. What Indeed. was voter participation when he was coming? I would imagine it was pretty high back at it, that. It became time very period. high because, yeah. you know, with the Rockefeller got so many folks involved in the process, especially black Arkansans who had historically been left out. He was a game changer in terms of voter participation. We that's that's the moment where we really see a big jump in participation is the 60s and then it continued to grow a little bit in this, the very competitive era of the 70s and 80s. Uh, even though it was a democratic era for the most part, there were still close elections where everybody, everybody felt their vote mattered in the process. Yeah, interesting stuff. All right, he is Dr. Jay Barth. He is the director of the William J. Clinton Presidential Library and Museum. You enjoying that job? I am, and I think we can play a big role in uh, in this work as well in helping uh, kids get civically get educated. Get Bill Clinton back. Get Bill Clinton back here on this show, and we'll do a little deal on All that. Right. All right, thank awesome. you, Jay. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. All right. Back with more right after this. <laughs>